Hey, it's Christian. I've got a, another quick video for you here, and we're going to be talking about using the Bezier tool today, which is, uh, as you see below, how we draw curves one segment at a time. And so what that means is we can put a point here and actually put a point here, and we can draw it and move it around, uh, and that's a great way to... Um, to trace things and so what we'll do is I'll zoom in here and uh, this is a, a drawing of a part that we'll be creating that's going to be laser parts and I'm going to just start by clicking in one spot and I'm going to try to trace the inside of this line here because that's going to be an, an actual trace around a metal object and so I want to keep it true to that uh, line there so all I'm going to do is, is kind of click around and as you click you get a straight line from point A to point B, but I've held in my left button, and then as you hold it in, you can drag it all around and, and give it a little bit of a curve, um, and so you'll get a feel for this the first few times you do it, it, it may drive you crazy. I made it red so you can see what's going on, and uh, if you've seen the, the video about reducing nodes, you'll know that uh, it won't matter how many nodes we put in here as much, so we don't have to be so super careful about trying not to put in a million nodes because we can go back and reduce those later. Um, this that I've just done is, you know, I clicked it and it's not exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to use that shortcut that everyone should know, Control Z, which is going to take me back a step. That's undo. Uh, and that's pretty much applies to, to almost any software you're using. Uh, and I'm going to come back and, and do it again here. So I'm going to do two back this time. All right, and so again, if it's not 100% perfect, you can always come back and uh, adjust those nodes and edit them later. But the idea is that after a while, you'll get good at it and be a better judge of where your next node needs to be. You know, sometimes you just get off a little bit and you just have to go back. But you can see you can real quick and easily, quickly and easily undo stuff. So not a big deal if you get a little off. And uh, the way that I like to change, uh, you know, I've zoomed way in here. And so you don't want to just start moving your tool over here because it'll slide real quickly across the page. So I like to use my uh, navigation arrows here. I think it's the easiest way to do it. Of course, you could switch to the hand tool and drag it around. But uh, then you're switching back and forth from tool to tool. And I just think this is just an easier way to go. So, uh, you know, you want to get some music going or something, because once you get into this kind of stuff, it can it can take a long time. If you get into really precise stuff, and uh, this is the kind of stuff that I don't like doing a whole lot, because it's just kind of mind numbing, like tracing stuff. Some of you real artists out there that really enjoy the tedious stuff. Um, this would be good for you guys, but I'm my brain's too fast-paced for this kind of stuff. So I get a little crazy when I do this stuff. But anyway, this is just to show you basically the Bezier tool. You know, it's it's great for these curves. As I click, you can see where I'm dragging it in and out, and that's adjusting my curves. And you, you know, you'll get a good feel for where your next one needs to be. Even over the course of one object, you can see when I first started out on this object, I had really close nodes, but they're getting a little bit further apart as I go. And that's, you know, that's the goal, is to try to have the fewest amount of nodes you can have. But sometimes it's just faster to just go through it and put a bunch of nodes in it, uh, and then go back and reduce those nodes. So uh, if you have seen the reducing the nodes video, then you'll know what comes next. But I'm going to go ahead and do it again here anyway, in case you haven't seen it. All right, so if I double click this and I hit Control A, it's going to give me, uh, it's going to select all these nodes. Um, I'm using my shape tool, F10. And then I hit Control A, so it's going to select all of these nodes. It's going to tell us we've got 46 nodes here on this particular object. I'm going to go up here to reduce nodes, and I'm going to bring it down. And you can see that blue line. That's what's going to happen once I let go of this and uh, and say reduce nodes. 
So it's, it's as long as I'm holding in my left mouse button, this is active. I can slide it back and forth in real time and see that blue line and see what it's going to do to it. So you can see I reduced this. Uh, if you look down at the very bottom in the information area, you see I reduced it all the way down from 43 to 17 nodes. And it's still pretty doggone true uh, to that red line. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes and let it go, and then uh, we can kind of look around here and, and see if there's anything we really need to do to make any edits after that. And there's kind of a little funky thing here, but it'll work. Uh, same thing here, running a little bit inside, but nothing major. So, so that's it. I hope that helps. That's a, a you know a great way to trace things accurately um, without having to go do any photo editing first and then bringing it in and, and doing an auto trace that sort of thing, and then certainly reducing the nodes at the end of the process is important. If you're doing things like laser cutting or vinyl plotting, those sort of things, we want to have the least amount of nodes possible. All right, so hopefully that was helpful, and uh, we'll see you next time.